This is Cybrick signing into Kane's Wrath on the Rift for game one of this best of seven. There's a little visceroid in that building, which uh, I've never seen before. But welcome to game one of a best of seven in the Mirrors Only semifinals. Playing the green in the north, this is Eclipse. Both players will be playing Zocom for this game. In the south, this is Buka. If you missed the quarterfinals video well, uh, it kind of doesn't matter that you know a couple of the results. I did not cover every game of the quarterfinals. I just covered a couple of them because I did not want to cover all of them. And a lot of the games were pretty straightforward wins or losses. So that highlights video really isn't about showing you the results moment by moment. It's more about just showcasing some of the best games. So it's still worth a watch if you haven't seen it. But we are here in the semifinals. This half of the bracket, Eclipse versus Booka. The other half of the bracket, Bike Rush Owns versus Shock Trepet. So we have four great players, Booka and Eclipse. Not necessarily who I would have expected to advance into the semifinals. Number one, Eclipse beating out... Uh, well, let's see. Booka beat Rex, so then Eclipse beat Futurama, which is not what I expected. Futurama and Rex would have been my obvious picks to get into the semifinals from their matchup, but that is not how the best of fives worked out. They were both pretty scrappy series going to a full five games, and you can check out the best of those matches in the quarterfinals video, but yeah. Eclipse and Booka, they both made it into the semifinals, and now one of them will make it into the finals after this best of seven, and they will be facing the winner of Bike Rush Owns versus Shock Trepet. Which, I mean, I feel like there's a pretty good statistic on who's going to be the winner of that series, but it means whoever is the winner of that series is going to be in really good form and a really tough opponent. So whoever wins this has another furious match ahead of them to win, to potentially win the Mirrors Only Tournament. Prize pool for this event was $200, hosted, of course, by Guaspari. So a huge thanks to Guaspari for hosting this event. And this is the third Mirrors Only Tournament. We will be rotating through three mirror matchups over the course of these this match and also the other semifinal as well. Zocom versus Zocom, Mark of Kane versus Mark of Kane, and Traveler 59 versus Traveler 59. So the first mirrors only tournament is GDI versus GDI, Nod versus Nod, and Scrin versus Scrin. And between these three tournaments, Guaspari has covered all nine of the mirror matchups and that's just uh that's kind of neat obviously we don't want every tournament to be mirror matchups but it is nice to have an event that does push people outside of their comfort zone especially with these longer rounds where as soon as you get to a best of five you have to play at least one game with each of the factions and a best of three you could potentially win with gdi and not alone and not have to play the screen matchup but with these longer series, best of five, best of seven, we do have a guaranteed four games here. So we will get to see all three factions and then at least Zocom repeated once and uh, potentially all of them repeated twice. And if we go all the way to seven games, then we get to see Zocom a third time. Although I don't know, maybe there's some kind of rule that says on the seventh game that the players can agree to replay one of the matchups, uh, not necessarily Zocom because with a best of always ending on an odd number, you're always going to, uh, I guess a best of nine would be the way to go because that way you could, uh, you could potentially replay all of them three times. Wouldn't that be fun? But in this case, it is gonna be Zocom. It is gonna be ceramic armor hammerheads. It is going to be mass pit bulls from both players and very macro oriented standard openers from both players. No fast techs. It was solid economy beneath everything, which by the way, Ox Transport with a Rifleman inside of it, one of the best scouts in the game, if not the best. It's relatively cheap. It moves very quickly, gives you good vision of basically everything. And eventually it will go down, but again, it's cheap. So 
That's no big loss. AP Ammo has finished up, so Ceramic Armor and AP Ammo, these Hammerheads, even without anything inside of them, they are a fearsome combination, and they're going to be able to get two Harvesters before the AA battery manages to kill anything. A third Harvester does go down, and Booka is actually happy to just sit here tanking that AA fire. He's going to lose a couple more Hammerheads on exit, unfortunately for him, but Eclipse taking the loss of three Harvesters there somewhat unnecessarily he was not prepared for that at all and he is going for a multi mcv play the marv is not on the way the tier three is still there well i guess even if he would have shut down the tier three it wouldn't cancel the marv orca strike coming in i assume that's what that is and if he manages to hit the firehawks on the deck this is going to be some heavy damage but not enough to actually kill them so firehawks will survive that orca strike coming in pitbulls are here mortars are done as well a little blue on blue there as Booker's mortars hit his own unit and the Marv, it looks like, is about 70% complete. We'll finish up before the mortars can clear out this area, but uh, the MCV will go down. It's just the Reclamator hub is going to be a little bit tougher to knock down for those pit bulls, especially with the Sonic Emitter there. You have to be careful about how you engage. And the Marv is going to be most of the way done, but it is actually a little bit of a race here. Booka doesn't know how close he actually got to shutting down this Marv timing. And it does mean that when Eclipse sells off that Reclamator Hub, it is only $162 that he gets in cash back. So unfortunately for Eclipse, that did not necessarily go the way he wanted. Fresh Expansion is here for Booka, who's having a very good showing this tournament, putting out some fantastic games versus Rex. He did get uh, overwhelmed in a couple of those games versus Rex, but he did also just have a very good showing overall in that best of five series. Eclipse bringing the Firehawks back to base. They're over here bombing stuff out of existence, possibly just knocking down those power plants, trying to keep the lights off for Buka. Both of these players, very solid economy up to this point. We see a big spike from Buka due to his Marvesting that field. So that's why it's a plus 16k boost over on the Buka side of the map versus the Eclipse side of the map. Pitbulls coming in. Pitbulls are going to go down. This is too much firepower from the side of Buka for those Pitbulls to escape. Marv is ready. He did manage to pull that Marv back. And he did send the Engineer in first, which is going to make this a right-left split on the Marv versus forward and back. Normally, you put the Zone Raiders in the first two slots and then the Engineer in the second two slots, but it doesn't matter all that much. Most of the time, it's not going to make a difference overall in the game. Perhaps a fresh expansion coming up here for Buka. No, he does just have this engineer that's not a scout that is a proper engineer uh unfortunately no one has grabbed grabbed the mutant hobbles just yet hope will always spring eternal for that tier three gets sniped a lot of firehawks coming in and bringing that down so potentially that does shut down some of the plans of eclipse i'm not sure where he was in terms of getting his space command uplink but it's possible that that just canceled his space command uplink meanwhile firehawks go down down on the deck and they immediately have to lift up again as that airfield gets eliminated a fresh mcv has stepped on out for eclipse his plan is multi mcv or bust it seems as he rebuilds that second mcv and he is going to be sending it forward no emp grenades just yet for Buka, and he is going to be targeting that marv but it is not going to be of much consequence right now the sonic emitters are the thing that's really doing the damage even without emp locking this marv down in place those sonic emitters still do massive damage to that marv triple sonic emitter hits hard against an epic unit and the marv getting targeted eclipse forgetting this marv forgetting its support staff and as a result he will go down loses the marv 
Harv there as pit bulls are running rampant in the base of Buka, going for harvesters, going for infrastructure, and the Firehawks do return back home. Massive shot from that Sonic emitter, clips two of those pit bulls, gets a third at max range there, and the harvesters are going to be paying the price as one of the harvesters goes down, and more Firehawks are going to be coming in. Anti-air loadouts in these Firehawks, taking shots at each other, doing what they can to end the other's air superiority. And well, when you got four Zone Raiders inside of a Marv, it is hard to stop. Low power mode as that MCV disappears and the Sonic emitters come back online, but it's only two Sonic emitters and one of them is already gone. Tier three reestablished on the front line, a bit of a dangerous position there for Eclipse. We'll see if Buka is actually able to punish that. Once again, this Marv has no support staff at all, but four Zone Raiders is a power powerful Mar, and he's just going for the tier three he doesn't even care about the sonic emitter he just wants to kill off that tier three and he will get it for the second time eclipse denies the tier three of or buka denies the tier three of eclipse and the sonic emitter war that is raging elsewhere on the map means that buka will win that sonic emitter war and it will be a conyard getting targeted down down but not before more and more sonic emitters can be established one of these pit bulls has gone heroic and the mcv will fall the Zorka Strike comes in just for good measure, but what is here to defend against this Marv? It's a single vet Marv from Buka, and he is now closing in on the main base of Eclipse. Eclipse losing his Tier 3, losing his additional MCV. He's getting pushed on two fronts at the same time, and he's defending one of them with Riflemen. All right, there is no anti-air for this Marv, but that's going to be the GG as Eclipse taps out, and Buka takes game number one of this best of seven and that will take us to tournament highlands for game number two this is the marked of kane mirror matchup and i mean everything else is the same from the last game tournament highlands once again one of these maps that these guys will be super familiar with but when you play Nod, particularly Marked of Kane, it can lend itself to some very aggressive builds. It's not an especially small map, but it is a pretty short map when you've got attack bikes. They cross the map quite quickly. And the fact that you can pack along a couple of EMPs to have the potential of maximizing devastation, it means that this map can turn very aggressive very quickly depending on how the players choose to play it. Both tip spikes have been captured by both players, and it's looking like very, very straightforward, macro-oriented play from both of them. And because it is Marked of Kane, we of course are always looking for those big moneymaker EMPs, those amazing shots that change the course of the game. And you know, sometimes we don't get them, but when we do it's always phenomenal or it's just slightly annoying like this mcv getting tagged by that emp a very slight delay to your expansion really nothing of note and a little bit of a check here from eclipse this is uh the smallest check possible really going for three bikes you're almost never going to get a harvester off of that unless your opponent really makes a mistake and a uh, little bit of an EMP there on the refinery, so very slight delay to the economy of Eclipse. Buka being annoying, but the real thing is to spot this second War Factory. So he will identify that it is two War Factories before the third refinery. He's doing the exact same thing himself, so he's going to be very comfortable with that. He's got the exact knowledge that he needs. And now the only thing for Buka to do to maintain his lead is to make sure that he macros well and he doesn't get surprised by any attack that sneaks in either through the front door or the back door. He knows what his opponent is doing. Preemptive EMP there. As you can see, he expected the bikes to dive in, but instead he completely missed on that EMP. He will tag one bike with an EMP there, and he does overkill it, which means the, that Eclipse gets an opportunity to hit back. 
No refineries. Well, there's a refinery now, but there were no harvesters, no refineries on this field. And and where is Booker going? Eclipse just gets to dive on this harvester basically for free. He can escape along the southern edge of the map and potentially get away literally scot-free. Trades a bike one for one, two bikes down for Eclipse. Maybe he hits one back. No, nope, another buggy does go down for Eclipse, but now Eclipse will come back through and the bike trades should be more even here. EMP whiffs once again. Another bike goes down for Eclipse. I think that was actually two more bikes and a buggy. So Booker cleaning up a couple of kills on exit here. Eclipse not getting a very good trade as he leaves, but boy, oh boy, getting that Harvester right as it spawns in is a much better kill than a couple of bikes on exit. Booker getting, I guess, surprised. He knew that that attack was there. He knew that it was coming, and he just short-circuited a little bit there in his defense. I guess he assumed that it was heading back across home, and you could see him kind of rally into a more defensive split between his two bases so that he would be prepared to respond. But in doing that, he left himself completely open, and Eclipse goes in there, gets a good kill. But behind that, Eclipse's macro is seemingly just fine. Maybe it's not perfect but it's looking great behind this. He's got double refinery on the expansion. He's got the hand of Nod for a couple of rockets so that he doesn't get surprised by bikes swinging in. He's going to have that extra firepower from the rockets. Eclipse re-engaging at the natural expansion of Booka. It's a trade of bikes and buggies. Eclipse is getting overwhelmed here, but Eclipse has cleaned out almost all of Booka's bikes. So the damage output from the buggies is pretty minimal, is pretty slow, but Eclipse will eventually get pushed away. Eventually he will be overwhelmed here. Three buggies are left for Eclipse. And a Harvester of Booka's does take some heavy damage. Another couple of Harvesters take a few individual shots and that Harvester will escape with that Tiberium, it seems. Eclipse doesn't lose his harvester as it heads back from that blue Tiberium. It looks like he managed to get a full load of blue Tiberium very nicely. And at the same time, here are the rockets from Eclipse kind of guarding that field in the north. In case Booka spots a harvester up there, he can engage it with those rockets. And is that a catalyst missile? It indeed is. On the other side of the map, we have a catalyst missile crashing into a refinery Eclipse fully controlling the pace of game number two. Booker was allowed to get out ahead and in front in game number one, putting a point on the board in this best of seven, but Eclipse is not going to let that stand, and he decides to strike back here in game number two. Eclipse is looking much more commanding. He's going a bit more aggressive with his bike buggy, but he's also macroing well behind that, and the return fire will be a catalyst missile on the other side of the map. Booker not going down without a fight, but let's see if he can protect these harvesters. Sea Tiberium comes in for Booker, so he will have that additional boost to his economy. Three harvesters are extremely low on health. It's finally paying off here as one of them goes down. A second is eliminated, and a third is about to be put in the dirt. Eclipse is very spread across all of these harvesters. So many of them low on health for so long, but with the help of Tier 3 Tib chemical, uh, Tib catalyst missiles. This is uh, those Tib core missiles. That is going to be a much easier time killing all of those harvesters. And Eclipse has done it. The full shutdown of Booker. The evening up of the score, one to one. Eclipse not going down without a fight, and a very solid game number two with Mark of Kane, but. Will that hold into game number three where it's gonna be a Traveler Mirror? A Traveler Mirror on Tiberium Rift once again. And I say once again because if you have seen that quarterfinals video, well, you already know what happened on this map with a Traveler Mirror. Once again, Booker is in the top left-hand corner. In the bottom right, it is Eclipse, evening up that score. One, two, one. 
Looks like no descent opening from either player. No fast legs quickly out of the gate here, which honestly the fast leg descents when you were also going to be going for cultists or ravagers or any of those other infantry that benefit from fast legs, then like, why not get it early? If you get something with those descents, that's super great. And if you don't, well, you need the upgrade anyways for the rest of your infantry. But in this case, no fast leg descents for either one. They are putting a slowdown on those advanced articulators. They are deciding to, uh, you know, let them come out just a little bit later. Harvesters very evenly timing timed between the two. The MCV moves to the natural expansions are also very equal between them and what else would you expect in a game three between these two they seem like they are gonna go back and forth one for one but uh you know maybe one of them will also turn on sicko mode and really go for it here in game number three and crush the other one but for right now they are looking to be a very evenly matched opponent to each other and also to be very equal in all of their timings in this particular map Blue Tiberium will be grabbed right away from by Eclipse. So he decides he wants that Blue tibi Tiberium nice and early. And, uh, well, he will get most of a load of Tiberium. He should be able to pick up a little bit more, yeah, from that, like, half-grown crystal. And, yeah, that's 90% that's of a load of Blue Tiberium. Not necessarily worth it for the travel time, but, you know, I doubt that that in itself will be the deciding factor of this game. Third refinery is coming online. Eclipse already has his deployed. Booka going for that power plant first, and Eclipse has the scouting buzzer to see that Booka has no third refinery there. It was a stasis chamber, and it was a portal in the north for Booka. So he now has fast legs. He's got those speedy little descents, and he is ready to go. His third refinery comes online. And at the same time, the very slightest amount of pressure coming out from Eclipse. He checks the main base, and he sees everything is looking pretty normal. There's nothing really too sneaky. Stasis and advanced articulators on the way for Eclipse. So soon, they will indeed be very equal to each other. Just a very slight difference in the priorities of who got the economy first versus who got the tech and the upgrades first. And okay couple of engineers one getting split to the north one getting sent to the south some potential for some sneaky and interesting plays booker happy to keep things focused here in the middle of the map cultist is going to be pushing forward cultist getting tanked and getting eliminated very nicely targeted there by booker those cultists cannot tank very many shots once they start getting shot up they get shut down pretty darn quickly and we're keeping an eye on one engineer. The other engineer is here, heading along the very southern edge of the map. So it is very possible that Booker is trying to go for a sneaky cap of tech or of something, and that he will sort of time it with an attack or with a little bit of harassment, which would be nice with these descents moving in that have completely gone unnoticed. One harvester getting targeted. That one's nice and easy. That one's for free. A second harvester. They haven't been called back. So that's two harvesters for three. Turn around and go for a third. He's going to try and get the Mechapede. He's not necessarily going to be able to get the one with lots of segments, but he might get this other one. No, no, nothing will happen there. However, that that engineer did uh, did get reasonably close has gotten reasonably close to the expansion without being spotted just yet. And hey, a couple of harvester kills, definitely not a bad idea. And a lightning spike just to add to the confusion and the chaos. But the buzzer has been sold off and that engineer will be found and killed. The other engineer possibly still out there on the map somewhere as these gunwalkers go for each other, go head to head with each other.
I'm not seeing the engineer anywhere on the southern edge of the map. Quite possibly it was already taken down, but instead it's going to be the wormhole. And there's the tier two eliminated there by Booker, captured and sold off. The buzzers will get the kill regardless, but that is a full reset on the tier three tech of Eclipse. His MCV was on the move. I don't think he ever got his signal transmitter down. No, he did not. And he also had no Eradicator, no Warp Chasm on the field. Slowfield will come in, but it's going to be cold to send Mechapedes here for Eclipse looking for the kill on these Gunwalkers. It's been some fancy moves by Booker, but can he deal with a straightforward attack at his natural expansion? This is the real question. Mechapede gets grabbed, cultists get pulled back. Booker really wants to shut down those cultists. Having to fight his own Mechapedes is not good for the situation that he's in. Your fancy footwork is one thing, but can you deal with just a basic ground attack? And the Buzzer Swarm does get get denied there. Booker under threat and will be forced to sell off that MCV. That Eclipse Prodigy brought along will spell the end of the game for Booker. Eclipse putting a second point on the board in this best of seven. Takes the fight to Booker and he says this is no 30 minute back and forth super late game packs and eradicators. I'm going to hit you in seven minutes with Mechapedes and let's see if you can dance. And Booker tripped over his own feet and fell over, which will send us into game number four. And that brings us to Tournament Odyssey back here on this classic map for the Zocom mirror of this semifinal. We have made it to game number four. Eclipse looking to close this one out so that he will be in match point position heading into game number five. The opportunity to end this series with a 4-1 map score if he can shut it down here. And then that will give him the option of, you know, advancing straight into the finals. Nobody wants to be spending extra time in this game if they don't have to. Booker, on the other hand, maybe feeling a little bit rattled after that loss. He definitely overspent on tech and fancy footwork. A thousand credits on engineers alone just to walk into the base and get cleaned up. And those were, you know, sub seven or pre seven minute engineers being sent in there on top of that he got his uh he got a signal transmitter he got the wormhole he got the prodigy all of those things are expensive and yeah getting the 2k back from the technology assembler is nice but it still doesn't help you deal with the army that is knocking on your doorstep and that was a case of Good ideas, not quite enough preparation on the basics just to be able to survive all of those moments. And if he had built, a, you know, a little bit more of an army, if he was a little bit more solid on his defense, then that would have been a fantastic way to transition into a third base, resetting your opponent's tech like that. Double Foxhole does get deployed, and uh, Double Foxhole is able to kill a power plant in uh, kind of an annoying way. You really do have to respond to a double foxhole in a way that you don't have to to a single foxhole, especially once your opponent gets that AP ammo. Scouting squads from both sides, but there is not all that much to confirm so far. Eclipse is uh, curiously late on his natural expansion refinery. Uh, maybe it was just because of this extra engineer. He did deploy one extra engineer and an APC to go for that uh, defensive tower. And, oh, he misses the power down. I think he was going to try and power down that refinery to keep the harvester safe, but he didn't, and he, uh, he guess he didn't actually need to. So maybe he wasn't trying to power down to keep the harvester safe, but sometimes you will see people do that. They power down the harvester so that it doesn't actually spawn in and get immediately killed when there is an attack coming their way. At the same time, this power plant is getting dangerously low on health. Booker is forcing Eclipse to deal with other more pressing matters elsewhere on the map. And it looks like this Harvester will survive, but it is dangerously close to death. And if 
if those APCs had been able to stick around and commit back into the attack, they would have been able to kill off that harvester quite easily. This power plant, dangerously low to going down just to the rifleman fire in there. It actually does finally die. And yeah, two riflemen get the kill on that power plant. Eclipse, not feeling good. His first harvester at his natural expansion, it gets sent back to the main base. It is sitting offline. This is probably two loads of Tiberium worth of wasted time. So it's not a kill of his economy, but it is a slowdown of the economy. And those rockets are just sitting there for no reason, waiting to get shot, which is a bit unfortunate for Booka, but certainly not the biggest deal having just one or two I know, okay, he was going for the power plant. For a second, I thought he was going to waste it on a watchtower. I was like, that is a very funny thing to spend a Zorka strike on, is a watchtower at the back of your opponent's base. But no, he goes for the power plant. He's hoping to cause Eclipse even more minor problems. I do really like this from Eclipse. He gets the defensive tower, and then he also gets a foxhole with a rifleman just to make sure that there is no easy way to kill, to take back that defensive tower. And that Harvester getting double teamed there, perfectly timed timed by Eclipse. You never know exactly the timing of the Harvesters. You call in the Orca Strike and you uh, you just hope that it lands, but that was absolutely perfect. He timed his attack with the Orca Strike so that they would both be there at the same time, and it worked out exactly how he wanted. Both players do have an airfield. We see a couple of Orcas crossing the map here for Booka, and he is also going to be going for the high ground Reclamator Hub, that fast Marv over towards the third of what he probably assumes his opponent is going towards. Scouting Rifleman comes in. Orca Strike, always a danger, but that's why these Firehawks are on Overwatch, just waiting for those Orcas to move into position. Tier 3 is done, and so are Mortars for these Pit Bulls. And these early game Pit Bulls, once they have that Mortar upgrade, they become so much more valuable at killing off buildings. And the Firehawks are actually going to be part of that fight as well. So Booka gets completely shut down, and the response will be an attempted Orca strike there on the airfield, and not much else from Booka. Booka is floating a little bit of cash and wishing that he had a better response to his opponent. The airfield still survives. One of the Firehawks does go down. I think that's a... Oh, no, he must have an anti-air loadout. I thought he was going to bomb that airfield, but no, he does not. And instead, that Firehawk also goes down. Engineer in the middle of the map heading for that EMP control center, I guess. And uh, Booka... Looking good in the first part of the game, looking at least solid enough, but this last minute or two, things have really fallen apart for Booka, and he's gonna try again for this Marv, but this MCV has no support, and there's no easy way to stop this. Firehawk's coming in again, and they just bomb out that Reclamator hub. Booka didn't learn his, his lesson the first time, and his response is gonna be four watchtowers plus some orcas to try and make this MCV worth it. But what can really make this MCV worth it? You've already lost two Reclamator hubs. At the very least, you're going to have to draft a barracks to, to get an engineer, and you've spent six watchtowers worth of cash just thrown away, and it's not even going to save it from the Firehawks. He does pack it up, though, which is nice. So as long as the pit bulls don't commit into the attack and, uh, and get the shots off on it, then... Uh, and the MCV goes down, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah, Eclipse is in control in this game. Really well done by Eclipse. Some minor mistakes, like, for example, letting this Firehawk die to rockets for no reason. But we can forgive him for that because of how well he is playing the rest of this. Firehawks are here uh, firing those shots, and that is an engineer inside of an Ox Transport, which... He's probably assuming that it's a rifleman for a scout, but no, that's an engineer inside of an ox transport. And third time's the charm. Marv of your opponent is already out. It's Marvestine that field. Booka is playing catch up from, you know, a mile away. He is desperate to try and get something out on the board here and... You know, maybe he will have a chance. Maybe he will catch his opponent at just the right way, at just the right time, and he will uh, he will find a way to overcome. 
Orc is once again going to tag that airfield. Not that big of a deal. And, well, he will have to respond to these infantry. This is uh, enough rockets that it's annoying, but they don't have tip field suits, so they will be relatively easy to deal with. Harvesters are just going to come in for the crush, and they get pretty much a huge chunk of the rifle in. And the Marv is now out. That is an anchor for Booka. Giving away three harvesters here at this field, definitely not an anchor for Booka. If it is an anchor, it's the kind of anchor that is dragging him down and drowning him. Uh, meanwhile, that MCV is fine. Booka now has an expansion. He now finally has his third up and running. Eclipse, on the other hand, he has really hit the brakes on his ground army. We saw him go pretty hard with the aircraft and never really build up much of a ground army. So he's been doing fantastic and shutting down Booka, but uh, these pit bulls are basically it for his ground army. Airfield gonna get targeted down, and uh, these, uh, keep moving, get moving. No, four, five, five pit bulls going down to those Orca strikes. Unfortunately, they were not paying enough attention, and it is going to be an expansion point on the high ground for Eclipse, and his Marv lets a Harvester escape there. Booka could have been denied another load of Tiberium, but this Harvester will be able to uh, not actually escape with its life because it's driving right past that defensive tower, so it will go down regardless. And honestly, Eclipse could walk down this hill as long as he is able to deal with the Orcas, and he could fight this Marv one-to-one -one because his Marv has two Zone Raiders, has two Engineers as well, and he could deal with that fight. I love the attempt of the Zorka strike there. Like, if engine, if uh, infantry are pooling in front of the, of that barracks, you'll clean them up, and that could possibly be a couple of engineers or a couple of zone raiders, which would be great for the Orca strike. But in this case, you know, there's there's actually nothing there, and it is uh, dealt with. Wow, Booka not able to hold on to the high ground. He's forced to sell off that MCV. He lost the Sonic Emitter War. And he just abandons ship up there. So at this point, he's got nothing left. I was going to say he has 3.6k in the bank, but uh, not much of a chance of victory and no chance of victory. So Eclipse has done exactly what he wanted. He is now in prime position to take this series with a 4-1 map score. And Eclipse has only one, one win that he needs left. But for Booker, this is his last chance. It has to be nothing but wins from here on out. And that comeback will have to start here on Pipeline Problems. Because Booker is on his last legs for this tournament, he has got this one chance to turn this series around. He had a very promising win in game number one, but all of that momentum has disappeared. And in the south, the green marked of Kane Eclipse has shown himself to be the better player all around. Once again, it's a mirror matchup, and on a map like Pipeline Problems, it is so rare to open in a way that is different to what we are seeing from these guys. It looks like it was a very, very slightly faster uh, refineries from Eclipse. Booka did place that barracks and get an engineer, but that's usually a pretty small difference between these players. One engineer, one barracks, when you've got a crane opener, usually doesn't break the bank or anything. And we'll see, because this game is about to explode. War Factory is up for Eclipse. And if he goes super aggressive, then this game could be over before it begins. Booker's chance of making it to the finals could be done before he's even gotten ready to uh, take another shot at it. So far? Oh, there we go. All right. Double War Factory from Eclipse. He is not interested in harvesting up this field. No refineries on this main green field yet. I mean, I assume he's going for one now, but he did prioritize that second War Factory above refineries on that field. 
which usually means you want to get something done quickly. Whereas on the other side of the map, double refinery on the main field and double war factory now. No laser turrets here, no hand of nod, no rockets, just exposed harvesters. Booker moves in, he drops a shredder turret just to do as much as he possibly can. It's gonna be one harvester down and these blue Tiberium harvesters are so, so important for Booker. Harvesters will mostly survive. Okay, only one down. Okay, two down it looks like and that is really tough for Booker to come back from. Not a good way to open this game number five. He's got that one point on the board and he needs desperately to turn this around. Operations Center is here as well, so it's not even like he even went into a third war factory off of his Blue Tiberium economy. Instead, he has decided to go into the Operations Center, and this is not the fastest refinery possible or the fastest expansion possible. He's instead going to be staying on that main base a little bit longer. And what's the placement? Yep, it is going to be tier three straight away from Booker. So he wants to do this bike buggy thing for a minute, and then he wants to get on out of there and move on to something else. Decoy Army comes in for Eclipse, absorbing a couple of shots there from Booker, and Eclipse just overwhelms Booker, exploding everything. As the units try to run away, they try to escape, and uh, well, it is not a multi-MCV play. It is going to be the sell-off of Tier 2. And then I guess fortunately for Booker, he does still have a little bit of blue Tiberium left, so he will still have that. And that MCV is so low on health, but Eclipse doesn't commit in for the kill on the MCV. Instead, he tries to go for the Harvesters, and everything dies. The Harvesters survive, but every unit that Eclipse sends dies. Instead of getting that more guaranteed kill on the MCV that was moving, he goes for the Harvesters, and he kind of gets nothing in exchange. Booka almost out of blue Tiberium. Eclipse has been dry on that blue Tiberium for a little while, and Eclipse is ready to go here at this natural expansion. He is going to be on that two-field economy, and Eclipse has actually kept his crane around for significantly longer than Booka did. A couple of rockets are here. Awakened are looking for those massive EMPs, and that is super fast Tibcor. Sub 530 Tibcor, and this one bike got stuck, unfortunately, for Booker. He forgot to select that one and send it off with the others. Okay, there, it finally leaves, but I was stuck for just a moment there. Fast Tibcor, fast Redeemer. Pretty fast avatars as well from Booka. So instead of spending all of his cash on an army and an expansion, he is spending that cash on tech and hoping that he can survive the next fight so that he will have the superior army faster than his opponent. Booka steps forward. His bikes are going to absolutely destroy Eclipses. I mean, Eclipses will do pretty well as long as they've got the better numbers. But uh, that Tibcor, those Tibcor missiles, as soon as those bikes attack, everything just dies. The burst damage from Tibcor is so crazy with this many bikes. And that's a Redeemer at 620 by Booker. Eclipse is going to back. Whoa, that was uh, faster than I was expecting. The tier three is out for Eclipse, but also Booker did this on no crane. So it's not like he was uh, producing a refinery and a and a tier three at the same time or anything like that. He was indeed building that refinery very slowly. A rage gen could be massive here. Tibcor v Tibcor avatar is going to be uh, potentially more plentiful on the side of Booka since he is the one who had that tier three first. Redeemer does get locked down. One EMP is not necessarily a big deal yet. Uh, one avatar. 
I'm not sure why he's holding these units back, but he is holding them back for the current moment. Rage Gen fires off a couple of bikes, will pay the price for it, and one shot on this avatar. The crush doesn't come in, and Booker will now find the harvesters completely exposed here. Jumps on one, nice and easy, and the beam cannons are going to start burning down that refinery. Three beam cannons on the edge of Eclipse's base. Booka is going to have to back off with that redeemer. It's low on health, down below half as these rockets smash into it. EMP wears off and the decoy army disappears all at once there. EMP lands once again. These avatars are getting further and further away from the protection of the base. Decoy army get call, gets called in again and this redeemer with the double engineer has so much healing, so much health that it can be sapped away and in this case everything is playing into Booka's hand. He manages to get the kill on both of the avatars. He loses one himself but he's got almost everything else trapped here and he is eating this army alive behind this Booka needs to keep up the pressure he needs to get some kills on the on the natural expansion of eclipse he's gonna get an avatar this is four avatars potentially here if he's able to reclaim this and get that last avatar killed then that is going to be the end of four avatars and uh, the potential of claiming all of those would be massive EMP lands again Booka is he falling apart here no uh, okay, maybe a little bit premature there, but Eclipse taps out there and sends us into game number six. Booka has a second shot at life. And that brings us to Decrepit Arena for game number six. Oh, that would have been brutal. <laughs> that would have been a brutal way to start off the uh, the game two of your comeback here if you are Booka. Two to three for Booka. Eclipse still one game away from going into the grand finals or into just, I guess, the finals. We don't really say grand finals when it's a single a limb. But he's going to be up against Shock Trepid or Bike Rush owns and... You know, if it's Bike Rush owns, it is going to be a tough fight. If it's a, if it's Shock Trepid, uh, it's a Shock Trepid who just beat Bike Rush owns, so it's still going to be a really tough fight, but it feels much more doable. Eclipse and Shock Trepid can at least trade games back and forth, and uh, we'll be checking out that series right after this one. Ooh. This is not something we see very often. We do see it every now and again, the fast move to the blue Tiberium, and it has been spotted by Eclipse, so he knows about this. We saw Booka trying to do the thing where you kill off the crystals. I don't know that that really works on a field that is this full, but obviously if you do kill crystals of blue Tiberium, it can be worth quite a bit if you commit to it, you know, killing crystal after crystal after crystal. If you knocked down, like say, half of this field's worth of Tiberium by killing it off, that could significantly hurt your opponent's economy, but it would more than likely just delay when they start heavily harvesting that blue Tiberium rather than like kill them off directly. Now, this is a huge delay to the economy of Booka. As you can see, even with the blue Tiberium, he's at 1.9k per minute, half of that of Eclipse because the refineries right here go down immediately. The war factory goes up so much faster. The harvesters get to work that much more quickly. Now, over time, Booka is going to catch up and potentially even overtake what Eclipse is doing. And you gotta hand it to him. I mean, he's in a situation where he is one game away from elimination, and he is not just playing this out straightforward normal macro. He is deliberately going for something that has a high risk and high reward factor. He can even up the score, give himself the shot for the ace match, or he can try and play macro and roll the dice in that way. Buzzers will get jumped on, and the descents might be able to outrange, yeah. They outrange that buzzer hive and it forces a second buzzer hive response, but it also delays the harvesting of this blue Tiberium. Really nicely done there by Booka. He avoids the buzzers. He's going to be forcing these gunwalkers to come back in and uh, he might try and dive on that harvester, try and jump past all of the buzzers. The portal block is fantastic there and that is going to be it. 
Uh, like two of the descent members make it past that defense. And here's the base crawl to the natural expansion. This does also leave your main base as now potentially your third. You have that option of taking it a little bit later in the game. And then it's kind of the quote unquote most safe base, even though it is now far away from all of your infrastructure. It is also the furthest base from your opponent. I do like the lightning spike. My worry is that he's going to need that lightning spike on defense. So throwing it away on offense when it's probably not actually going to get a harvester kill. I mean, if it did get a harvester kill, it probably would be worth it. But where it's probably not going to get a harvester kill when you need it on defense, when you're playing from a risky position. Well, we'll see. Uh, doubles up, doubles down on this descent attack. It is fast legs versus slow legs, but never mind. The upgrade comes in right there for Eclipse, and Buka is going to be try and jump on those cultists. He will instead go for the harvesters, and uh, the buzzers did get a big kill there. Delayed the attacking of those harvesters. Meanwhile, in the south, gunwalkers push in. There, you've got a cultist here as well, and the gunwalkers are going to cut down those descent numbers, but one or two gunwalkers may pay the price for it. Wow, three of those gunwalkers, very low on health, but still alive here for Buka and he's kind of done it he's made it to the point of the game where he has stabilized enough that things are mostly just equal to where he would have been if he had not done anything at all i'm not actually sure that this has changed the game in any meaningful way to if he had just done what Eclipse is doing. Cultists are here. We've seen them on both sides, so they are the potential game changer here, depending on how the mind control works out. And they are also kind of a deterrent because when your opponent mind controls one of your units, you can take it back or you can recapture it for yourself. And honestly, I don't know. You might as well just throw away those descents. I'm not sure one descent squad is the big win that you want. Mechapedes are here. This is how Eclipse broke Booker in the previous Traveler Mirror. And he's looking to do it again. Booker hasn't thrown as much cash away on that, uh, on that tech and on those one clicks. So he should have more of a basis to bring this back. He has no Mechapedes back at home. So he needs to be really good with these cultists. He needs to take probably two of these mechapedes away from eclipse to turn the tide of this fight but it's going to be tough because eclipse has his own cultists so he can quickly recapture the minds of those mechapedes and bring them back to the front line but yeah this is now five potential shard mechas on the front line and Buka has none Oh, if I was you, Booker, I would not be out on the front line like this. Slow field comes in. The cultists will move forward. There's the slow field for responds. I think that's kind of Booker's only move here is to try and hold this line. And he's got the lightning spike just to absorb some damage here. Prodigy pushes forward. Area mind control could be annoying, but it shouldn't be the end of the world. Area mind control goes in there. One of the cultists get cut down, and now these three gunwalkers are just going to be donated away, basically. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, it's going to be an engineer attempting to go for the capture there. I think that was an MCV capture and kill. That's a heist by the prodigy of Booker. He finds it and he gets that capture. He sneaks away. And now the Mechapedes are coming. You better have enough to deal with the Mechapedes because the shards are here. And now the prodigy of Eclipse is here as well. So buzzers do not get the kill on that on that prodigy. The Mechapede does get captured by Buka. He's got that at least, but there's the sell-off by Eclipse. He gets his own MCV capture. The engineer gets sniped, but so does the prodigy. And two mind-controlled mechas are keeping Buka in this game. It's not necessarily done and dusted. The tripod from Eclipse, while well, mind controlled by Eclipse, is now going to be able to har attack these harvesters because the harvesters are no longer phased. One of the nice things about uh, Scrin harvesters is you can phase them quite easily, and uh, Booker has nothing. Booker has virtually nothing here on the front lines. He's got one tripod. He's got two stolen mechapedes, but his economy is about to collapse here as Eclipse comes forward and Eclipse is just churning through the units at the front line. He is crushing what Booker has 
And if he loses this economy at the front line, I'm not sure what Booker can really do here. Colts has come forward. He grabs another one of the Mecha Beats. If he gets the snipe on the Prodigy, that would be amazing. But the Prodigy pushes past the defenses. It does finally get killed, so he doesn't have to worry about that. But what is his answer to the Eradicator going to be as the tripod returns to the control of Booker? He needs to shut down this Eradicator and at the same time somehow supercharge his economy and come back online. More cultists to the front line the EMP locks down the eradicator but the mind control comes in Booka chasing down these cultists trying desperately to eliminate those mind control units from this game another EMP needs to land no this eradicator hexpod will be able to escape one tripod down second tripod almost down so little health there it goes and Booka has virtually nothing left it's all gone to the Wii eclipse it's all on eclipses side and Booka falls down at the last hurdle he's gonna need some major engineer caps to get himself back in this game husks go down Booker has no economy has no production has uh, is about to have no tech as well and the cultists do get cut down so you know at the very least uh, and actually, this is a fully heroic Mecha Beat, but it instantly gets recapped there by Eclipse. And this Mecha Beat is just tearing everything up. A fully heroic Mecha Beat is not something we see very often, and it is just absolutely destroying. Area Mind Control comes in, but it misses. I don't know how, but that misses. And so does Booker's chance of making it to the finals. Eclipse shows himself to be the better player, but Booka put up one heck of a fight and showed Eclipse a good time, but it's not enough. And now we jump to the other side of the semifinals bracket to find who find out who Eclipse is going to be facing in the finals of Mirrors Only 3. And our second semifinal takes us back to the Rift. Perhaps even the Tiberium Rift in the north. Playing the Cyan, this is Shock Trepid. And in the south, playing the red, this is Bike Rush Owns. Once again, kicking it off with a Zocom mirror. And just like the other series, we will move to Mark of Cain after that. And then Traveler 59 for game number three. And that is our loop for this tournament. The Rift, glad to see this at least a couple of times. Uh, decent amount of Tiberium on this map, but also a nice amount of terrain breakup. You know, this is kind of a choke point. You've kind of got choke points on this map, but they are still reasonably generous and there are still lots of paths to get around. You also have these very far out corner paths that you can traverse past the tib spike but uh you know those probably won't be too much of a factor here in this game shock trepid up just a smidge in economy for these first couple of moments but we'll see if that actually sticks because now bike rush is up just a smidge in economy as the natural expansions come up both players are content to Play this one out very standard and macro oriented, at least at the first base. And again, this is one of the shorter walks that we have ever seen to a natural expansion. It is a mere moment away for each player. APC moves forward, couple of rockets inside of those APCs, but Bike Rush gets eyes on them pretty far away. So he will know that this is coming. He will see this from quite far away and he will have an idea about this at the same time bike rush is also going to be spotted shock trepid has this fantastically placed foxhole there on the left side of the map which will give him the exact vision and warning that he needs to know that this attack from bike rush is coming his way so that is pretty much perfect from shock trepid both players got the scout that they wanted. They were able to see it coming from a long ways away, and now it is just about how they respond. And in this case, Shock Trepid actually goes command post and airfield? Uh, airfield? 
Airfield, no, okay, it was refinery. He went command post right away. So this is theoretically an extremely fast AP ammo. Triple watchtower will be the response. Low power mode for just a moment there for Bike Rush. He should cycle something down so that he can keep his power online. But no, it is not a fast AP ammo. It's not Shatterers. Why did Shock Trepid delay his third refinery by so much? It's a rig. The rig is the reason. The rockets do eject, though, and they don't get the last. They do get a couple of extra rockets off, but it just wasn't enough. It's a rig here, but only one APC is left, so this rig better deploy and get some great shots off on these harvesters, but I feel like this just needs something else. You need predator tanks or four more apcs you need something to go along with this to really make it worth it he will get one harvester it seems no the harvester survives just barely bike rush is up 4k per income in uh per minute in income and it's traded for a rig rush Bike Rush gets a big advantage in Eco over the next couple of minutes, and that rig got zero kills. Almost that worked out. Maybe if these Predator tanks that were out over here on the other side of the map had been uh, somehow able to traverse quickly enough, but... I mean, I just don't know how that build was ever going to work. I don't know if that was just a mistake by Shock Trepid, like if that's a bad build, or if that's actually a good build and we just didn't see the perfect execution of it. But either way, Bike Rush is still up plus 4K per minute over Shock Trepid. Fortunately, there is no Harvester there, so that will not be any extra damage done by Bike Rush Owens. He is calling in reinforcements, so this will be potentially Essentially, a very hard-hitting push. This is quite a few Predator tanks. This is a lot of rockets, a lot of rifles as well, and the economy behind it is really good. Bike Rush Owns sees it coming and does pull that extremely damaged Harvester off the line, so he is able to save that. Now, on top of all of this, this is a lot of firepower, but the economy of Bike Rush is solid behind it. Hammerheads are going for the line formation over top of all of the rockets. They may not actually have enough firepower to tear through the rockets. Reinforcements coming in will finish off the Hammerheads, so it's down to Pred Tank v Pred Tank. Three versus five rockets on the side of Bike Rush, and it is a complete wash as Bike Rush goes over the base and over the army of Shock Trepid, and there is just not much left on the ground. Hammerheads will tear these rockets apart, but the tier three is about to go down. The Sonic Emitters is here. Shock Trumpet can hold the line with his multi MCV, but it's going to cost him his tier three. It's going to cost him the delay of this push that he was hoping to make off of the back of a third base expansion. A couple of extra Predator tanks are being committed into this, and they will be killed off. They will be eliminated. A waste of an Orca strike there, but Bike Rush was worried that he was wasn't going to get the kill on that bike rush still up plus 4k per minute over shock trepid in this game the orca strikes have been consistent from bike rush and now he's going for the split the splash damage on the refinery and the command post who cares about the harvester when you can kill the refinery the command post and the tier three, a full tech reset by Bike Rush. Sock Trepid is back in the Stone Age. It's seven and a half minutes in, but it might as well be two and a half minutes in for Shock Trepid. He does still have the airfield. He's rebuilt the command post. He doesn't have to repurchase AP ammo, so he's got that going for him. But now, plus 6K in total in minute of income per minute for bike rush his lead in income is just growing minute by minute uh hammerhead goes down i guess the hammerhead got the scout i mean we'll see if the orcas tag the firehawks on the deck but we already know that the damage output from these zorkas is not enough to kill the firehawks so it kind of doesn't matter and uh well actually all of the firehawks will be safe the harvest the uh, airfield will be safe as well and this is just a tough spot for shock trepid we saw it from the very very beginning that rig rush was supposed to go a certain way it did not 
Bike Rush Owens was able to deflect that, and then his faster economy, because he didn't go for a rig rush, meant that he had a lead from that point on for the rest of the game. He has not let that lead slip away, and indeed, he is still up plus 4k per minute in income over Shock Trepid. And on top of that, Bike Rush Owens, he's got a Marv. He hasn't even gone for a proper third base! For whatever reason, he hasn't gone multi-MCV, he hasn't gone for an expansion, he is just sitting at home, but he's happy to do it because he's in such a strong position otherwise. The only thing that he doesn't have going for him is he's long distance mining, but I'm sure he's about to marvest up part of this field and on his way to cleaning out Shock Trepid's main base, he will then get the big boost to his eco that he's been looking for. Uh, <clears throat> Bulldogs get called in, and the Firehawks help clear out that airfield. Double Zone Raider, double Marv inside of that. Uh, double Zone Raider, double Engineer inside of that Marv. Tier 3 gets sniped once again. Uh, don't worry, the Tier 2 is still back at home, so we can rebuild the Tier 3. Oh, sheesh, plus 10, plus 11k. <clears throat> he's again, he's up maintaining that plus 6k income lead, despite the fact that he doesn't actually have a refinery on a working Tiberium field. Bike Rush Owens is long distance harvesting and marvesting, and uh, still managing to stay ahead of Shock Trepid in income. But... That is what happens when the game plays out this way. Bike Rush Owens ready for the big Zocom push. Who needs jugs? Who needs artillery? Says Bike Rush. Infantry now have Tib field suits. He never got AP ammo. He has completely skipped AP ammo this entire game. It looks like it's going to be finishing up momentarily, but he skipped AP ammo until this moment. And of course, he was going Orcas, he was going Firehawks. He didn't need it because he wasn't going Hammerheads. He wasn't going uh, APCs. And there's the GG. The writing was on the wall. No surprise there. But Bike Rush Owens takes game one of this best of seven. Shock Trepid had a great idea that did not execute well enough, but he gets a second shot in game game number two and that will take us to small town usa for our marked of kane mirror match glad to see small town usa a couple of times in this tournament it's not a map that we see very often it is quite a small map it can be a little bit weird to play on but it is one that often does yield unusual and fun to watch games. I'm glad that we don't see it a ton. I don't know that it's the best map overall for uh, competitive play. I don't know why they're EMPing each other's buildings. That's kind of a funny move. Uh, but I'm glad to see it every once in a while. Buggy comes out. Bike? for some reason keeps around his hand of nod he is either that worried about some kind of follow-up attack so he's going to keep it around so that he can either pump out laser turrets or rockets just by taking that uh putting it back on power or he has something else planned for it perhaps something a little bit more aggressive but he goes for the buggy scout he sees that it is two refineries he may have also seen that it's four harvesters and uh well it's not going to be a fifth harvester right away. It is going to be a buggy scout from the side of Shock Trepid. But Shock Trepid has these two buildings in the middle. He has a building down there. And he has a building over there. So he has good vision across the map. He would at least know at the mid-map point if anything was headed his way. And now he will confirm with the buggy scout. He goes in. He actually sees the timing of the fifth harvester. So he gets all of the information that he needs. He did also see that the Hand of Nod is still around, but that's not that big of a surprise. It's uh, pretty common to go for a couple of rockets uh, as you are transitioning into your natural expansion, and especially on this map, where there is no third, it's your natural expansion and it's split. It's sort of a uh, slot machine natural expansions where which one are you going to choose, north or south? There's a little bit of poker. There's a little bit of randomness involved as far as that goes. So it can be awkward. So it's not a big surprise to keep around that 
barracks and in this case we might be having a fast one click coming out from a bike and maybe it's going to be the exact same thing from shock trumpet they are both drawing close to a zero on their bank account so they will need to stop spending if their choice is indeed to go for that chemical plant and to go for some one clicks they are quite expensive and they're both reaching the end game of that building at around the same time buggy comes in for the scout there's the chemical plant and here comes the catalyst missile from bike rush all right well that would have been pretty great but there's the scout and it's gonna be a catalyst missile on each side there is two harvesters grabbed by that catalyst missile a third harvester is already low on health and a fourth harvester it looks like it should be able to go down this is four harvesters very low on health just focus down the ones that are low on health and that will be that seed tiberium drops in and he's not going to be able to kill those last two wow bike rush owns manages to escape with two harvesters on extremely low health after all of those bikes swung in at just the right time with that catalyst missile coming in. and of course bike rush owns did hit back on the other side of the map shock drop it is up slightly in total resources gathered but considering the exchange that just happened he is not up nearly as much as he would like to be although he does get a couple of bikes there almost for free since that harvester did absorb the damage from those bikes and bike rush owns goes back into an operation center he sells off the tier three he sells off the chemical plant of course so he's not trying to go for obelisks as he moves into this multi mcv phase of the game and instead he's got something else up his sleeve however shock trumpet has kept around his tier two and his tier three so there was no need for a rebuild and he is gone with just a single mcv i like that bike rush owns is at least taking the time to kill off all or to clear out all of the buildings in the middle of the map he's at least going to have that going for him and he won't be giving his opponent those buildings basically for free uncontested harvesters are low on health but they have healed up significantly since the last time those bikes swung through here beam cannons are also out for bike rush owns and yeah, that's just gonna be a couple of bikes going down. No harvester kills, not even significant damage on any of them. It's not like there was a tip vein detonation that could have followed that up or anything. Shock Trumpet floating 6K for a moment there. That's uh, that's actually a bit of a surprise how much he was floating, but he does have ex his expansion coming up. His uh, MCV is in position there, and he did finally get out a second MCV. He does still have that Tier 3, so there is always the possibility of Obelisks or Supercharged Particle Beam Shredder turrets would also be fun. There's the Obelisk to pop those beam cannons. There goes one. EMP might come in. The others are out of range, so no real problem there. And nope. Never mind. Second beam cannon does go down. I thought it was out of range. It was not. And the other two Awakened squads will be eliminated. Bikes come in. And once again, Shock Trepid for the third time in this game falls comically short of killing off one of Bikes' harvesters. Spectre Artillery will be the response from Shock Trepic. He was up by just a smidge in total resources gathered. That's actually grown to about 5k total resources gathered advantage. He might actually kill this beam cannon with a Tib Trooper, which is not something you see very often. And Bike Rush Owns is going to be looking towards his natural expansion to be his salvation. I think he really thought that beam cannon attack was going to do more than than it did mcv has moved to an even better position gives him more build radius he can drop an additional refinery uh maybe not here maybe you can cram it far enough over that a catalyst missile wouldn't nuke both of them but you can push those obelisks much further out much towards the pathway there another bike gets sniped there harvesters looking for someplace to refine they are unfortunately rallying back to the main base uh, that is too many harvesters for one refinery so they're either going to be sitting around waiting outside of that refinery or they're going to be driving back to the main base either way it is not super efficient harvesting 
uh, tip core missiles and supercharged particle beams both now upgraded for shock trepid he is certainly looking good in the upgrades department i'm just worried about his ground army because he doesn't have a whole lot he has bikes but only like five or six of them and for this late in the game, you really would expect to have a little bit more on the ground. Bikor Jones is going to be returning fire. He's got his own bikes. He doesn't have Tib Chemical Missiles, but he, uh, Tib Core Missiles, but uh, when you're trading bikes for bikes, uh, you don't necessarily need the Core Missiles. Ooh. Bike gets shot right as he's trying to exit. Those bikes are normally fast enough that they can get out of the obelisk range, but not that one. That one got caught. Bike Rush owns, though. He's got a very nice setup in this corner. It took him a little while to get there. Shock Trepid was a bit faster with the expansion being well set up. But Bike Rush owns is finally there now. Tier 3 is not back online. Instead, he wants Secret Shrine. He went a second War Factory, and he's gone for a Hand of Nod, and now Bike Rush Owens is going to be looking to put on the pressure. I love this extremely forward disruption tower. I mean, as long as he can get into that kind of a range, he is going to... MCV doesn't get hit. Oh, man, that would have been massive if the MCV just got killed right from the beginning there. EMP lands, but the command to unpack had already been given. Laser fence on this conyard for Shock Trepid, and he does have his own enlightened squads here as well. Meanwhile, a fight for the main base. Shock Trepid is going to be getting shoved away from that main. He will not be able to get any additional harvester kills there, and Shock Trepid still maintains a slight eco advantage over Bike Rush, but he really needs to shut down this base either if he kills off the MCV or if he could kill off a refinery, he would then be in a good position to actually close this game out. But as long as Bike Rush holds this base, Bike Rush still has a bit of strength in this game. Bikes are going to try and push past that front line. One bike does make it. The other units get popped by that obelisk, and the MCV falls. Bike is able to take down that MCV. Beam cannons are just too powerful to not have any kind of defense to deal with them. Vertigo bombers are nice. Or if you can get specters to actually uh, land their shots, those are nice as well. But uh, one harvester down. Bike Rush Owens finally getting some damage out on to Shock Trepid, but the real problem with Bike Rush is going to be this squeeze that he does. Coming in from both sides, supercharged particle beams should beat just regular charged particle beams coming out from Bike Rush Owens. And the EMP will land. Both of the Spectres do get locked down. The War Factory as well, but the Shredder Turret is alive and well. The Beam Cannons don't have an answer as if the Enlighten can close the distance, the Enlighten can shut down those Beam Cannons, but then the rest of Bike Rush's forces still have to be dealt with. The beam cannons are being targeted. They are being knocked down one by one. They're being eliminated, but the enlightened, the Tib Troopers are being shredded by the Shredders, and Bike Rush Owens has to be answered. He cannot be stopped just by looking at him. The beam cannons get targeted, but the rest of Bike Rush's force is still here. He's still got the beam cannons. Six of them are out of range of these forces, and a nice amount of Shredder turrets means that you need more than just infantry. You need vehicles to stop these shredder turrets. You need something else to stop these beam cannons. There's no aircraft on the side of Shock Trepid, and Bike Rush Owens dodges those specter shots. He doesn't let that one land on the whole host of his beam cannons, and he's happy to waste Shock Trepid's time shooting shredder turrets while the beam cannons avoid the damage. Beam Tannins targeting that Spectre, trying to force it back. Will the shots actually land? Still, they miss. They go wide. They don't land on the Beam Cannons. And so many shots just going to nothing as Bike Rush Owens now going to be targeting a refinery. He's switched to the north side of this engagement, and he's going to be targeting down the main base of Shock Trepid with a seemingly unstoppable base defense force. He lacks the upgrades and Shock Trepid just taps out. Bike Rush owns with a less upgraded force 
but with the beam cannons coming through for the victory, targeting down Shock Trepid's buildings one by one, burning them to the ground, and Shock Trepid ahead on economy for almost the entirety of that game. And then at the last possible second, Bike Rush crosses over to end the game with a slight eco advantage. But look at that Shock Trepid the whole time ahead in income. He had that upgrade advantage as well and he burned all of that cash wasted into the base defenses of bike rush those cheap shredder turrets wasting time killing the infantry and the beam cannons did the damage that mattered that'll do it for game number two bike rush owns pulls out a win almost comically on small town usa and game three will take us on a journey an odyssey if you will to tournament odyssey for our final mirror matchup. This is our three of three before we start repeating them. And he needs your cheers, he needs your energy. This is Shock Trepid. Once again in the Cyan in the north. Meanwhile, on the south side, looking great. This is Bike Rush Owns. Keeping that portal around. He likes his barracks, he likes his portal as well. Scouting buzzer going through. He gets a really good look at the map with all of these buzzers. Four buzzers scouting the map. Shock Trepid also has his own buzzer. He's taking the southern route. One of the common places to try and hide descents is along the edges of the map. If you're Bike Rush, you either come along the southern edge here and go this way. And if you're Shock Trepid, you might go along the northern edge into this corner and sometimes you just send like a couple of squads over there to kill off the expansion point and not necessarily to go attack the enemy right now now those first two games i feel like those are really good games to watch and analyze those replays if you are trying to get better at kane's wrath looking at how bike rush owns handled that game number one the combination of the attack on the front line with that orca strike on the back line killing those like three harvesters and then just the consistent pressure of orca strikes are going in regularly while the attack and the defense is happening on the other side of the map and then that game number two how to trade or how to take a uh, an economic disadvantage for 90 percent of the game and also an upgrade disadvantage and put the pressure on your opponent so that they waste all of their time and money trying to defend against that push and honestly shock trepid didn't necessarily do anything wrong for like 90 percent of that game and then that push he funneled so much money into enlightened squads and tib troopers that just got instantly shredded by those shredder turrets and he didn't have the tools to actually quickly deal with the beam cannons and he couldn't penetrate the stealth of bike rush owned so he was shooting in the dark he was missing a lot and he just never landed the damage that he needs in this case bike rush owns almost gets lucky catching that gun walker right there and uh shock shock uh what is going on i don't i don't know why those harvesters were not pulled immediately i don't know why this gunwalker stayed over here fighting that other gunwalker that's two harvesters down right from the get-go it's game number three and bike rush owns is suddenly looking phenomenal shock trumpet is technically up a little teensy bit in income because he got a faster third and fourth refinery than bike rush owns bike rush owns went for the stasis went for the portal got himself out a bunch of descents and now it is paid off he kills a gunwalker he kills two harvesters he kills a third harvester with two ravager squads two ravager squads <laughs> not even that much and the buzzers are going to catch some of them but the ravagers still survive which means they can come back with their tiberium agitation okay finally the gunwalkers will catch them good night to at least one of those ravager squad and uh well the other one will survive for now i'm gonna throw out a couple of shots uh maybe get a tiberium agitation but uh it won't be enough to kill the harvester and okay whoo 
Ooh, there we go. All done, all dead. But round two, two Ravager squads. That is enough to kill off a Harvester. Just those two Ravagers. You come in, you poke, you prod, you kill your Harvester. That's three Harvesters down. Bike Rush Owns has caught up in the income game and started to pass Shock Trepid in total resources gathered. And, uh, you know, that first field is going to be very even between the two players. The second field is the difference maker in a lot of these games. Another Harvester down, and that one was full of Tiberium. So it's not just a Harvester kill. It's not just a second. Okay, that one actually did survive. But it's not just another Harvester kill, it is a Harvester full of Tiberium that was about to refine. This refinery should be working right now, and it's not. Gunwalkers for Shock Trumpet will find a little bit of damage versus Bike Rush Owns. Will be able to target down one Harvester, but they are so slow. Compare that to the burst damage of the Ravager, the right tool for the job. And the Gunwalkers are just silly. By comparison, how many more Harvesters? There are still five Harvesters at this field, and, uh, well, there are now four Harvesters at this field. There are three Harvesters at this field. There are two Harvesters at this field. Gunwalkers versus Ravagers. It's not even close how long these Gunwalkers take to kill one single Harvester. How many Gunwalkers are you going to trade for one Harvester kill? The slow field comes in because Bike has all of the options in the world, and he's now plus 1k in income up over Shock Trepid, but I bet over the course of the next two minutes, that is going to grow enormously as the averages even out and as Bike Rush's income advantage becomes more realized on the graphs. Bye-bye. How many more Harvesters? Place your bets in the comments now. He can go for the refinery if he wants with this many Ravagers. And indeed he does. The Harvester and the refinery both go down. And now it's five Harvesters on one refinery. Gunwalkers pressing in. Area Mind Control comes in. He grabs two Harvesters. That's great for Shock Trepid, but it lasts a moment. Ten seconds or whatever is how long that lasts. And Shock Trepid is going to need a whole lot more than that he gets the drone ship that's a killer move that's actually really sick the tier three is damaged but bike rush owns has what he's got and that is it a war factory tier three and enough cash to uh to survive on but he's done his damage on the other side of the map those ravagers poking and prodding at shock trap it and now bike rush is once again up plus 4k per minute in income over his opponent descents are out bike rush has a timer and actually uh it would be so sick if this engineer stole that tier three shock trepid has an opportunity to do even more to bike rush and these ravagers running wild and it just doesn't matter Bike Rush, Owens come, Bike Rush Owens comes in with his own prodigy. He was going to steal back his drone ship, perhaps, away from Shock Trepid. And it just didn't matter. Just beating him on that economy time and time and time again. Slamming those Harvesters with the Ravagers time and time again. And that will do it for game number three. Bike Rush's advantage grows as we head into game number four. The comeback has to start here, has to start now on the sickest city in the USA. Lane once again is Zocom with his last chance, his last tournament life on the line. This is Shock Trepid crushing through the quarterfinals over his opponent and in the north doing the same a set of three zeros got them to the semifinals this is bike rush owns on the cusp of advancing to the finals where he will face eclipse but shock trepid is still here the last step in this journey is to win one more game. Shock Trepid needs to win four in a row without dropping a single one. It is a tough task, but he is up to it. Six City is one of those small maps that can turn chaotic and turn bad very, very quickly. You've got one field, two fields, 
that's kind of it. You do have these blue fields in the corner with destructible, destructible bridges leading to them. Sometimes we see those go down. Oftentimes we do not see them go down. But with Zorkas, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to nuke those bridges. So wouldn't be surprised if we do see them get eliminated at some point in this game. And uh, you can eliminate the one that leads to your opponent's base. And then you can sort of safely harvest this blue Tiberium. And occasionally we will see that. You can also sometimes trap your opponent's army in that corner if they come in to like attack your high ground base and then they try and sneak off this way. And then you have aircraft. You can kill this bridge and then kill this bridge as well. Bikrashones is going for a pretty quick blue Tiberium. He's also sending a pit bull to the bottom left hand corner where he is sort of predicting that his opponent might be going for that blue Tiberium. And wow, both players went for Tib Field suits immediately. I don't remember seeing this armory first kind of build before, but this is Shatterers and this is all out aggression by Shock Trepid. Okay, his MCV is on the move, so it's not an MCV cell into this, but it is an armory with Tib Field suits, rockets, reinforcements called in, even Shatterers and Sniper teams are here as well. Bike Jones has his own sniper teams as well. He sells off his his barracks and he's going to get three pit bulls deep into enemy territory. The back line will be targeted by these pit bulls and it is four pit bulls, but fortunately there is a zone shatterer there to help push them back. Shock Trumpet says, this is my last life and I am going to make it count. I will not go quietly into the night. I will bring the fight to you and Biker Shone sells off his armory as his front line collapses, but he's got two sniper teams on the north side cutting down down all of the rockets every single rocket squad almost goes down as his pit bulls continue to work away at these harvesters shock trumpet didn't deal with the pit bulls he didn't actually cut them down and now his economy has been eviscerated out from under him the throat has been cut his watchtower has not been dealt with on the other side and that shock trumpet uh, shatterer gets eliminated as it tries to retreat he needs a better angle. He needs to find a way into this base. He has denied and delayed the expansion of Bike Rush Owns, but that is not enough. When you are down by two or three harvesters and a refinery in your main against your opponent, that is not a good space to be in. Bike Rush Owns stealing that blue Tiberium from the top, using that to extend out his small main field. And even with sending a harvester to that corner field, getting that blue, Bike Rush Owns still has harvested more of his field to the tune of 6,000 credits of an advantage over his opponent. And as the natural expansions come up, the Orcas come in. Another harvester nearly dead here for shock trepid and uh two oxes that are just not leaving the battlefield i'm not sure what they are still doing hanging around here the overcharge does fire off for bike rush owns that's why that uh zone chatterer was low power mode and the return fire will happen two of the zone chatterers go down for bike rush owns the third gets eliminated shock trumpet finds a kill there he goes for his own airfield but he has a long way to make up all of the distance between them it doesn't help that this harvester is offline neither being repaired nor harvesting the worst of both worlds orcas move back out they're going to uh, spot nothing because there is nothing on this field, but they are going to have the potential to swing in to the base. Instead, they're trying to take shots at those pit bulls. That is probably the best thing for Shock Trepid so far in this game is the fact that he was able to kill off two of those orcas and the orcas wasted their shots trying to hit pit bulls. Maybe they were able to take out one of those pit bulls. Uh, I think there was an, was there an air, no, the airfield is up here. I don't know what this, this orca strike is called in on, but, uh, good for that. One harvester does go down. Shock Trumpet clawing his way back into this game. And it's still going to take more, but, you know, hope springs eternal. Bike Rush owns this up. 18 
thousand credits total resources gathered and that's really from like the last three minutes of this game another harvester goes down a shatterer as well traded back for only one orca that's that's an okay trade you would prefer if it was zero orcas but that's an okay trade what is this harvester doing Mike Rush owns Harvester auto harvesting into the field of Shock Trepid, and the Orcas wasting their shots on both sides, one on infantry, the other on a traveling uh, Harvester. And Mike Rush owns will redeem himself by being able to pick up a Harvester kill regardless. And oh man, these Orcas trying to hit moving targets is comical in a bad way, and it's very bad for Shock Trepid as Mike Rush owns is forces show up into the base of a shock trepid and he might even get this refinery no the refinery does survive and there the predator dies as well bike rush owns still up 2k per minute in income over shock trepid Harvester now going to be stealing that blue Tiberium bike rush owns has gotten essentially both blue Tiberium fields almost for free so if you're wondering hey where does the advantage in income come from that is a part of it is just the fact that bike rush owns has gotten this blue tiberium up there and he's getting two loads of that blue tiberium down there almost for free orcas coming through shock trepid takes some damage on these orcas they do at least make it to the base. I mean, they could target the Tib Spike if they just want to go for the safe target. Uh, he's gonna, if he commits into this, he might lose two Orcas. And the pop of that AA battery does mean that the Orcas all survive, question mark. One goes down. Unfortunately for Shock Trepid, he loses another Orca. Bike Rashon's hunting for targets, hoping for something a little bit juicier, trying to get the Orcas on the deck, but it just doesn't happen. And Bike Rashon's loses one Orca on exit, maybe two. The damage is spread across them too perfectly. The unfortunate, somewhat RNG nature of unit targeting does mean that those two sets of units did target different Oh man, that one grenade went to the rifle squad instead of clearing out that foxhole, which is what it should have been doing. <laughs> the unfortunateness of unit targeting sometimes in these games. Building will be cleared. Zorkas get their kill that they were looking for. And once again, Bike Rush owns clearing out that blue Tiberium, taking it all for himself. And this fourth game, the story is told so much in that economy graph. Up almost 30k in total resources gathered in under 10 minutes. Bike Rush owns is just demolishing the economy of Shock Trepid. It never has a chance to get established. And the Zorka is clearing out infantry. It finally does happen. They finally land those shots, but it's just riflemen. It's not even the end-all be-all. It's not any of the stuff that really, really matters here in the semifinal. Another Harvester goes down. Shock Trepid just cannot keep them alive. He at least got a combat support airfield up so he can refuel those Orcas. He doesn't have to rebuild the entire airfield which combat or, uh, support airfield is just a little bit cheaper. Obviously, it doesn't produce anything. It's not a production structure, but as long as you've got the aircraft, you can refuel, rearm, you can repair them. And this is no engineers inside of this Marv. This is maximum damage. Bike is here to end this game. He is still up plus 6k per minute in income over his opponent and his total resources gathered has now grown to 33,000 of an advantage. Marv moves in and I have no idea what Shock Trepid is even supposed to do against all this power. No one can stop this. You need EMPs. You need a way to delay the game for about another two minutes with these Orcas killing that Marv 
and then being able to just harvest the field freely. Mass Hammerhead swings in. The support of the Marv will be from the skies as Bike Rush Owns is looking to go into the finals with a perfect record here between the quarters and the semifinals. The EMP does land, but there's so little damage output from Shock Trepid. He just has nothing to actually kill the Marv. Power plants getting targeted down one by one. Command post gets eliminated. And Bike Rush Owns is just goofing right now. He isn't even uh, ending the game necessarily. Shock Trepid has virtually no chance in this game to even kill the Marv, but he is still fighting it out as long as he can. Hope springs eternal, but it does get dashed to pieces for Shock Trepid. And the hope for Bike Rush stays alive as he advances into the finals versus Eclipse. Welcome to the finals, best of nine. Starting on the map, Voice of Heaven, which I don't know that I've ever seen anything on this map, but I wanted to because the tip fields are all square. And I think that's great. I have not seen that before. And it's something that I've been wanting to check out. In the north, playing the red, playing Zocom, of course. This is Bike Rush Owns. And of course, you already know his opponent, but let's intro him anyways. Playing green, this is is Eclipse coming through on the southern half of the bracket looking good versus all his opponents managing to beat out everyone on his road to the finals Futurama was a bit of a surprise Booker was maybe expected I don't know I wouldn't have necessarily predicted it one way or the other but Eclipse topples Booker regardless in a uh, pretty commanding series. And he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Futurama all five games. And here he is going fast command post and a base move. That's a rig and it gets spotted immediately. This is a one refinery rig build by Eclipse and Bike Rush Owns knows everything about it. So right now, the bottom of the screen, there's an income counter and that is going to deviate a larger and larger difference between these two players. And what we're looking for is when it comes crashing back together. As Bike Rush's income advantage grows, he's got two refineries versus the one of his opponent. Eclipse is pressing the gas all the way down but not for the economy for the aggression bike rush owns is taking a position he technically can expand but i think he's just going it's not even a watchtower uh is he no he has the barracks he had the barracks he could have gone guardian if he wanted but this is all out assault from uh, Eclipse. He is looking to go, 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 and to not ever stop. So it is up to Bike Rush to be able to stop this. The War Factory back home gets sold off so that he can produce a War Factory on the front line. This will give him two areas to potentially repair from the rig and the War Factory. The rig will deploy. Bike Rush owns, gets his own watchtower okay it's a good double war factory over here for bike rush owns he's got the double refinery he is up 3k per minute in income so this is where the game will be won or lost bike rush owns needs to do the damage he needs to stop this attack and eclipse needs to do some massive damage to bike rush killing the mcv would be huge but it can't stop there he also needs to shutter the economy or at least hamper bike rush after he kills that mcv barracks comes in the body blocks are good the war factory is absorbing a lot of damage and eclipse is putting out the damage on that mcv but as long as the mcv stands bike rush owns has a chance there the war factory 
factory falls, the first critical structure for one of these players. The rig falls, the repairs are gone, and Eclipse has not broken that MCV. It's Predtex versus Predtex, but there's so much more on the side of Bike Rush, and he will finally break that MCV, but he needs war factories. He needs one or two of them here on the front line. He needs so many more units than he has, but Eclipse's economy is flatlining. His economy is down to zero. His unit count is almost down to zero. And if it wasn't for those riflemen, he would be basically down to zero anyways. Watchtowers surrounding Eclipse on basically every side. And he's taking damage constantly as the MCV gets sold. So do the dreams of Eclipse to win game number one. Bike Rush owns will get the first victory of the finals. The mirror matchup leads, leaves nothing to chance. Map selection doesn't matter when the factions are mirrored. It's all down to your game knowledge and your skill. I love to see the aggression from Eclipse hitting that game number one as hard as he can. He gave it his all and it didn't quite work out, but Tournament Highlands is a map he is going to be much more familiar with. He is going to know the nooks and crannies of this map. Voice of Heaven, you know, maybe it's a map he's unfamiliar with. He was doing a very aggressive build, and you have to have that down perfectly when you're going up against a player like Bike Rush Owens and you want to do something that aggressive, that all-in. You have to have everything super dialed. And here... If Eclipse wants to keep up the aggression, if he wants to keep up that extremely fast-paced uh, gameplay, this is going to be a good place to do it on. Kind of misses. Uh, I think he wanted to nail the Harvester coming out so that it would delay the eco of Bike Rush ever so slightly and not just nail the War Factory. So uh, maybe his, his plan was to hit the War Factory only, and so he nailed it in that case. He shuts down the War Factory again. Gets the double scout as well. If Bike Rush Owens was playing anything with flames, this would be fantastic because you would confirm whether or not it's a flame rush and also you'd have a good idea of how many flames because a scout that deep into enemy territory would almost certainly see the operation center so you know what time the cell is. But in this case, you know, none of that matters because these guys are playing Marked of Cain. And of course, this is a best of nine, so we get to see all three factions and, uh, well, we'll even get to see them more than once as these bikes kind of trade blows back and forth. A very slight amount of damage on that harvester. Bike Rush owns just making sure that it's not ultra, ultra greed from shock, uh, from Eclipse. And nice EMP there. Bike Rush owns will be able to target down at least a couple of these bikes. And Eclipse fires back. The trade is a two bikes for two bikes so far. And, uh, well, this buggy can work away at these bikes. He will get one more bike kill, and then he will have to skedaddle. He confirms it is War Factory first at the natural expansion. Bike Rush owns doing the same thing. Of course, when you do this build, you are pretty much drawing a zero on your bank account the entire time. So every dollar that comes in, you are spending. And uh, depending on if you time it right with that additional power plant, you may even have a couple of moments there where you uh, have zero and you can't produce anything. We keep seeing Eclipse just hit zero and uh, not necessarily be able to produce anything there. Bike Rush hits it himself, gets tagged at zero for a couple of moments there. As long as your float is in like the sub-100 range, your production will be nice and smooth. And now that the third refinery is up for both players, they should be very comfortable. Okay, MCV on the move. Bikes engaging against bikes. It is going to be Eclipse getting cleaned up here because the buggies from bike can absorb so many more shots. Eclipse comes in with a couple of more bikes, gets a couple more kills, but also loses all of those bikes, and the buggy will go down on exit. Unfortunately for Eclipse, he really wanted that to be a bigger win than it ended up being. It sort of ended up just being a draw. I don't think there was a significant winner in that bike buggy exchange. And Bike Rush Owns now has a decent position to place his additional refinery at his natural expansion. Keeps them nice and far apart. Because, you know, you never you never want that catalyst missile to land on you and get two refineries. Bike pokes in, does a little bit of damage to that power plant. 
not too much of a drain. Eclipse doesn't want to have to spend that additional cash. He would love to catch this blue Tiberium Harvester. That would be delightful if he can. He might just dive on it. How many bikes will he lose if he chooses to commit into this Harvester? He's going to lose quite a few bikes for it. The final shots come in. He does get that Harvester, and he trades back almost every single bike. So as long as he can hold off the aggression from Bike Rush Owns, that Harvester kill will pay for itself. But man, he spent a lot more than the cost of one Harvester in terms of bikes and buggies to get that kill. There's the decoy army answer back from Bike Rush Owns. We saw Eclipse use it moments earlier to get that extra couple of shots out of that army. And the decoy army, of course, it really isn't to fool your opponent. It is, of course, just to absorb the rockets. And if the guns from the buggies land on those uh, decoy army units, it clears them out so much faster. You really want those rockets slamming into nothing and wasting their volleys. Scorpion's showing up, and this is what Eclipse exactly what he didn't need. He lost so many bikes and buggies earlier. He hampered the economy of Bike Rush Owns, but he lost so many of his units to do it. And now he has to deal with this attack constantly crossing the map, putting pressure on his natural expansion, forcing him to overspend on defense time and time again. And behind it, Bike Rush owns steals more blue Tiberium. One bike, three buggies is not much of a harvester killing force. Oh no, Bike Rush owns might actually pick up a harvester kill as well. The power plant comes in, almost body blocks the harvester from returning to that war factory. Once again, the harvester in the worst spot, not actually healing, not actually harvesting. And Bike Rush owns gets the far back expansion. He gets the far back refinery, which means the only refinery left is the one on the front line, the most exposed refinery. But fortunately, Shock Trepid or Eclipse manages to get a refinery in answer back. However, it doesn't matter as much when Bike Rush Owns is the one being aggressive. Eclipse is the one on the defensive foot who has fewer harvesters overall. Bike Rush Owns once again up plus 4k per minute in income. He's got harvesters lining up. Eclipse on the other side, literally nothing empty on that field no harvesters really even working bikes and buggies going to be passing each other tib core is fantastic if only he had enough bikes for it to actually be worth it bike rush owns stealing that blue tiberium helps boost his eco heading into these fights he doesn't just have one base worth of income when it comes to that or two bases worth of income. He's got that like 1.5 or 2.5 because of that blue Tiberium. And now Bike Rush owns up 8K per minute over his opponent. Just massive income advantage. And hey, Eclipse will pick up an extra Harvester kill, but it really isn't the win that he needs. Killing seven Harvesters? Sure, that would be something. At least then you know that this attack from Bike Rush isn't going to have a huge follow-up because he just lost seven Harvesters. And then you just have to deflect that army without having to worry about the follow-up. But in this case, you have to deflect the army and you have to stop the follow-up. And Bike Rush Owns loses one more Harvester. That's good. It's a good start from Eclipse, but... You need so much more than that. Awakened squads are here. They're on the wrong side, unfortunately, for Eclipse, though. And his Redeemer is being targeted down before it's even out. Beam cannons are burning down the building. Laser fence doesn't matter. EMPs don't help because it goes down anyways. And the Avatar is slowly marching their way across the map. Stealth Field comes in as well. And it's a fire sale from Eclipse. It's the end of game number two as Eclipse drops a second map versus Zocom, now versus Marked of Kane. And up up next will be Traveler 59. Eclipse has a chance in Traveler 59 to try out a new faction against Bike Rush Owns. And the Traveler matchup will be here on Six City USA. Once again, glad to see this map coming out again. Oh, the aggression just does not stop. And look at that. This is the real advantage of this build. 
You don't have to build a second engineer, baby. You get the one from your MCV cell. It will be a fast game one way or the other. If you can't beat them, join them. If you can't join them, then at least rush them out of existence. Hey, where's the engineer? Where's the... Where's the other engineer? You need two tip spikes. Okay, Bike Rush Owens does see this company coming. He's got his own portal up. He's got two buzzer hives as well. Power plant doesn't get eliminated. Oh, you really need to kill that power plant. Second power plant is already here for the backup. So that's three buzzer hives and the GG comes in. Ooh, boy, Eclipse going suicidal in that game. And, uh, well... It was a short one. Bike Rush owns, gets the win three games in a row. And you have to admire Eclipse's gumption to go for that rush. Game number one, game number three, massive aggression. And let's see what happens in game number four. And that takes us to the map, Tournament Alpine, which we've seen a couple of times, but not very much. Always glad to see the variety as we return to our first matchup, our first faction. It is Zocom once again. And in game number four, things are looking really comfy for Bike Rush on the left side of the map. And uh, pretty interestingly bad for Eclipse on the right side of the map. Game number three, that one is a bit of a wash. It kind of seemed like he didn't want to play a long game with Traveler, which on one hand I get. If you do not want to play the mind control switcheroo against Bike Rush, go for that ultra aggression. Oh no, he's out to lunch. Oh, I hope that engineer gets into that tip spike soon. Uh, if you don't want to play the mind games against Bike Rush Owns, the mind control games against Bike Rush Owns, then sure, definitely go for that super all-in right from the beginning. Uh, Small Town USA, nice tiny map for that. Also means it's pretty easy to scout because it doesn't take a long for a buzzer to get to the other side and to be able to see that coming. MCV cell? No! That's a regular old engineer. Hops inside of that APC. The, the tip spike is down here, so I'm not sure if that APC is going to split off to the south or if that APC is destined for one of Bike Rush's buildings, possibly Bike Rush's tip spike. Uh, we'll see. For now, it is headed straight across the map. And the MCV is not. So he did pack up his MCV for just a moment there and then moved it over. And because of this very aggressive uh, APC opener that we see, yeah, Bike Rush Owns is up 2K per minute in income over his opponent. We'll see. The double refinery is a good build. Bike Rush Owns has defender's advantage. This is not that much firepower. He really needs to get the MCV. I mean, if he gets the War Factory, there's a possibility. Engineer doesn't get the cap. And yep, as soon as that engineer goes down, Eclipse has been defeated. He throws in the towel because he knows without that NG cap, that game doesn't work. But man, if that would have worked, that would have been a sick opening. And it definitely feels like Eclipse is wanting to go for the trick plays more than anything. And he's got another chance in game number five. And it's our chance to have a nice, long, drawn out game. Welcome to Tournament Galaxy for game number five. This is Eclipse over here on the right side playing that green Mark of Kane mirror matchup. And of course, it's Bike Rush Owns on the other side. But Tournament Galaxy, very easy to defend. Three bases. It's a, you know, a short walk from your main to your natural. Not the shortest, but a very short walk. And then your third base is close by as well. And if you haven't seen this map, the reason that it is disallowed in a lot of tournaments is because you can kind of form a wall between these three bases, and then you have three fields worth of income, and very often the games can turn into stalemates. I well, maybe I shouldn't say very often. Very often they just end normally, like any normal game would. 
but this map has a much higher percentage of stalemateiness. This is, if you're familiar with StarCraft 2, this is the equivalent of a map that like is really good for Terran floating buildings, which uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but there are some of those maps that just have massive dead airspace off in the corners. And uh, those maps, you know, if a Terran wants to, they can just float their buildings there forever and drag out the game to eternity. This is an MCV cell all in double war factory engineer heading to the Tib Spike in the south. And also, uh, this is not a black hand all in, but this is a, an awakened all in. So you hope that it has EMPs with it. Bike Rush owns EMPs, his own harvester there, sells off his refinery, tags two of those bikes with it. And this is where being marked of Cain is a blessing and a curse because your opponent's infantry units just do so much damage. He needs probably two more harvester kills, and this actually works. One more harvester kill. Bike Rush owns getting torn apart, but he just needs a couple more shots, and he's not gonna get it the buggies come in the double war factory runs out of steam and bike rush owns saves that harvester saves his tournament and he is your mirror champion eclipse goes up to the plate he swings and he misses four ultra aggressive all ends one normal game and it's five wins in a row for Bike Rush Owns. And that will do it for this event, for this tournament. Thank you all very much for watching. A huge thank you to Guaspari for putting it on, for hosting this event, for coming up with the concept. And, uh, well, unfortunately, that is how the finals go. So, oh, well, we did get to see some good games, though, throughout this event. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is Cyber signing out.